Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about a new collection from Colourpop. This is the Lucky Penny collection. It's launching on Thursday, October 21st on the Colourpop website at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so make sure you check your time zones if you want to be there at the launch time. The prices haven't been confirmed by Colourpop yet as of the time I'm filming this, but I'm going to give you my best guess on what the prices are like based on their previous releases, and then I'll update the description box to reflect the actual prices once they're confirmed. You should be able to use discount codes on these new products. I do have an affiliate code, it's just AMANDA in all caps. That will save you 10%. Full disclosure, I do earn a little commission anytime you use that code. I like to be very upfront about that and I really appreciate everybody who does choose to support the channel in that way. It definitely helps out. We don't have too many products in this collection, but I do have swatches, I have application demos, and I have comparisons for all of these products. So let's get right into this Lucky Penny collection. We have some new cheek products. There are six new shades of the blush and light sticks, three blushes, three highlighter sticks, they're all going to be sold in these duos, so there are three new duos, but they will probably be available individually as well. Not 100% sure on that, but I just have a feeling because typically they release them individually as well. Here's a look at all of the outer boxes for the blush and light sticks duos. Typically, the blush and light sticks are $9 each, so I'm guessing that the duos are going to be somewhere in the 16 to 18 dollar range it's just a guess though i'll update the description box once the prices are confirmed here's a close-up look at the actual product itself i'm kind of bummed that they're moving towards printing the shade names on the side instead of on stickers on the top or bottom because the printing on here does tend to wear off pretty quickly and all the outer packaging otherwise is identical across both the blush and the light sticks. So I really liked the original release of this little product line where the shade names were on a sort of bubbly sticker on the top. Maybe that's kind of picky, but that's just my preference. And overall, that's really my only criticism of these cheek products. I really like all the shades that they chose. I love that they did three different options that are pretty clearly for light, medium, and deep skin tones. This just gives everybody something that's going to work for them. And I'm glad they really went for it with this Good and Copper set, which is the deepest of the duos. The highlighter from this is honestly a very very deep rich coppery color overall i think these are all really cute i've done in-depth videos of the blush and light sticks formulas previously on my channel so if you're interested in hearing more about my thoughts on the formulas or how i apply these then definitely go and check those videos out i will try to remember to link them in the description box these are the same formulation, same everything, so those opinions and reviews will apply to these. I did want to give you a few comparisons here. I tried to do comparisons for all of the products, so I wanted you to see these blush and light sticks side by side with some previously released shades. Hopefully this will give you an idea of which ones are going to work best for you. And I think the highlighters are definitely more unique than the blushes, as you can see from this comparison. But overall, I like all of these sets. For lips, we have three Luxe Velvet Lipsticks. The Luxe Velvet Lipsticks have been previously priced at $8 each, so I'm guessing these are going to be similarly priced. We've got the same styling, same theming of the outer packaging, and the lipsticks themselves have these little special gold caps, and they do have the shade names on stickers on the bottom, so I, I like that, you know. 
it's a little picky thing, but there it is. And keep in mind the metallic details on the cap are likely to rub off with use. The applicator is the same as the previous releases, this long, skinny, kind of slanted doe foot. Now I'm going to show you lip swatches of each of these three shades. First is Penny Pincher. This is sort of a mauvey rose color, and this is the shade that I'm wearing throughout the talking portions of the video. Next up, we have Tried and True. No surprise, this is my favorite shade of the three. A nice warm neutral is always my go-to type of lip. The last shade is a classic red. This one's called On a Roll. I do see this being very useful for both fall and holiday looks, so this was a pretty smart choice. I am going to show you just a few comparisons here with previously released Lux Velvet Lips. Like the blushes, a lot of similarities here, but I think some of these are discontinued shades now, so if you missed out previously, maybe one of these new ones will be the perfect replacement. Of course, there's also an eyeshadow palette. This is the Lucky Penny palette. In not very typical ColourPop fashion, we have a very different look on the palette and the outer box. Typically, they are a lot more similar, but here we're seeing the box looks like the other outer packaging and the palette is quite a bit different. Now, just taking a glance at the back here, you'll see there are no eye safety warnings, no press glitters, no pigment warnings. I always love to see that. The palette does have the heavy duty plastic packaging. Typically palettes like this are priced at $14 each. So I'm guessing that's what this will be priced at as well. I also like that this palette has sort of a glittery look to it. This is something a bit different and it really fits this collection. So that's a cute little extra detail. The palette contains four true mattes, one matte with glitter. It's that shade Hit It Big. There are four shimmers and there are no pressed glitters. I want to give you a really close up look at these eyeshadows in the pan too so that you can see these metallic textures really close up just mostly because it's very satisfying to me. Before I get to the comparisons for this palette, I just want to go ahead and show you some finger and brush swatches of the Lucky Penny palette. The finger swatches are pictured on top and then the brush swatches are directly below. I don't think any of these shimmers truly are duochromes. I do think that both shiny objects and favor have a little bit of a shift to them. Shiny objects is like a pinky to gold type of shift and favor has that sort of red undertone to the golds. But overall, I think that these are just very, very shimmery metallics with a quite a nice formula. Now let's get into some comparisons. I did 10 palette comparisons. I asked for comparison suggestions over on my Instagram page. I definitely recommend following along over there too because I show swatches there first and I get all kinds of great input for comparisons for videos. Highly recommend checking that out, but I have 10 comparisons here. This is a warm neutral palette. At the end of the day, I probably have a good hundred palettes in this room that would be a decent comparison for the Lucky Penny palette. I just tried to take a mix of the ones that were suggested to me on Instagram and the ones that I thought were going to be the most relevant. It would probably take many moons to make a comprehensive comparison for this one, but here are 10 good ones to start with. First up, we have the most recent little holiday, what I call the fall day release from Too Faced. This is the Cinnamon Swirl palette. I have pretty recently done a whole swatch and review on this palette, so if you're interested in this one, check it out. It is a pretty decent dupe for the Lucky Penny palette, and a very requested comparison was the Tarte Tartlet Toasted, as well as the Urban Decay Naked Heat, which you will be seeing next. Tarte isn't really quite as monochromatic. There are a lot more light tones in the Tarte palette. And now we're going to look at the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette. 
This one, the mattes have just really crapped out on me over the years. I've had this palette for quite a while, so it's not too much of a surprise, but color story-wise, I would say pretty similar here. The Bare Necessities palette is a frequent flyer on my comparison swatches, and this is why you can really easily dupe or at least come close to duping almost any neutral, warm neutral palette, at least that I've seen over the past several months. So Bare Necessities is pretty close. Sandstone is another one that a few people asked for. I think this is another one that is a great comparison. Some very, very, very similar warm, toasty, orangey brown shades. And if you have Sandstone, you pretty much have these same colors happening. Next is a OG ColourPop palette, really the OG ColourPop palette. It's the first 12 pan they ever made. This is the Yes Please palette. I believe this one is discontinued, but if you have it in your collection, as you can see here, you already have some pretty darn similar shades to the Lucky Penny palette. Now we're going to look at the California Love palette. This is one that I've really liked over the past couple of years. I will say that it's not quite as reddish orange, but it does have a lot more variety. So if Lucky Penny is too monochromatic for you, California Love may be the one you're looking for. Next is Nude Mood. Nude Mood is quite a bit lighter and more varied. There's a lot more variety among light, medium, and deep shades. Lucky Penny is very mid-tone across the board. And of course, Wild Child, we had to look at this one. One of the newer brown palettes added to the Nine Pan family. And this one is quite a bit deeper and also not really as overwhelmingly warm. It is still a warm toned palette in my opinion, but not quite as orange, I guess. This is one a lot of people asked for. These do not look similar really at all in my opinion. Maybe, maybe that first sh shimmer shade, but I think it was just a deceptive photo that was floating around. Baby Got Peach is not similar to this one in the least. Now I want to show you an application demo of some of the cheek products and also the eyeshadow palette in action. None of these are going to be groundbreaking techniques, obviously not going to be very avant-garde color combos with what we're working with here. But I want to show you these products in action. I think that's an important part of a review. So instead of voicing over what I'm doing, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on this collection while you see the products in action. That way we can keep this video short and sweet. And I'm sure you can figure out the techniques that I'm using along the way. So let's take a look at some of these products in action and I'll wrap up all my thoughts on this collection. Okay, I'm gonna try to sum everything up in a concise way. I do tend to ramble, so I'm going to try my best. All in all, I think that the blush and light sticks are the absolute best products in this collection. I like that there's a variety of shade depths and they will most certainly work for just about anybody who's interested in them. I just find these to be the highest performing and just most enticing for me. I do love this formula, so that's probably why I'm a little bit more biased towards them. I do not love the Lux Velvet formula. When it first came out, I think I appreciated it more for the gap it was filling in the ColourPop line, but especially since their glossy lip stains have released, I think that those have a more comfortable feel on the lip and a longer wear time. So I don't love the Lux Velvet formula, but if I was going to pick one of those from this collection, it would be that warm mid-tone kind of terracotta color called Tried and True. I think the shade on that one is lovely. It's just not a formula that I personally love. So maybe if you are a Lux Velvet lip lover, then those may be a little bit more enticing to you, but for me, it's just not my preferred lip formula. 
Now, let's go ahead and talk about the palette. I am gonna just say the obvious. This is a mid-toned, warm, orangey-brown neutral palette that is going to infuriate some people and that is going to be the top of the shopping list for others. I fall sort of in the middle. I definitely don't see it as necessary and I wouldn't even say it's my favorite of the ones that I compared it to here in this video today. However, I see why people like these type of shadows. They look great on so many people, so many eye colors, so many skin tones. This is a warm, fantastic little color story that a lot of people are going to love and it's going to suit a lot of people and I don't knock that at all. If you're one of those people and you love this palette and you're going to wear it all the time and it's going to be your favorite, then that's awesome. I see why. I think it has a nice formula. It has a nice mix of textures. I love the really, really metallic shimmers in here and it was easy to use. I like the way my eye look turned out. It's cute. For me and probably for a lot of other people who have larger collections, I don't really think it's necessary. I think you're better off getting the Bare Necessities palette, but maybe you don't like mega palettes. Maybe, you know, there's something for everybody. It doesn't have to be everything for somebody. So personally, I'm feeling kind of meh about it just because it's not doing much for my collection color-wise, but I think it's pretty, it's easy to use, it looks great, and if you love this color story and you're drooling over it, then I don't really have any bad words to say about that because, hey, it works well and the little penny theme is very cute. So I can see both sides. I'm sort of in the middle. I would rather just get the blush sticks and call it a day. Side note, I freaking love this Level Up mascara so much. It's so pretty. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about this collection. Are you interested in any of these products? Are you going to be passing up on them, adding them to the wish list? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Ah, ah, ah. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So let's just drop, drop. Are you drunk? <laughs> Scene. Ah, what are you talking about? My lips just feel dry and not cute. These are not my favorite. I much prefer the glossy lip stains. What do I know? That's just one gal's opinion. What was that face? Uh, uh, eh. Adorable. Whew, I think I need to recaffeinate because I zoned out there for a minute while I was lip swatching. Yikes. On a roll. Get it? Like a roll of pennies? Like a roll of coins? Get it? On a roll? You get it. Maybe you didn't get it. Now you get it, because I explained it to you. Okay, great. Editing Amanda, you know what to do. Make it make sense. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Whew. Here's the thing. They feel dry like a, you know, a velvet matte long wear liquid lipstick should, but they don't last a long time. These wear off of my lips so quickly. Just not my favorite. Did it. Smashed it. Nailed it. All right, that's all I've got. I hope you have an absolutely lovely day, and I'm just happy that you're here, and thanks for hanging out, and thank you for being a friend. If you didn't just sing the Golden Girls theme song, why not? Okay, anyway, I love your face. Bye!